Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, my social thread. My name's Crystal and today is my June makes vlog, which is basically a roundup of everything that I have made in the month of June. For those of you that do already follow me, uh, this will be a, a bit of a repetition uh, because I do do Friday Sews vlogs where I round up the makes that I have done uh, for the week or for that fortnight. So therefore this roundup will be a complete uh, roundup for the whole of the month. If you are liking my content, please do kindly like and subscribe. I am actually on, um, I believe, 1,200 subscribers uh, since January when I started. Um, and I would love to get to 1,500 um, as soon as possible. So please, please do click like and subscribe if you like my content. And please do check out my channel for my other vlogs as well. So first and foremost, what I'm wearing today is the Megan Nielsen, um, what's it called, Matilda dress. And I'll just stand up for you. So it's um, a shirt dress uh, and it's made up in a lovely mustard um, rami linen from Minerva Crafts. Uh, the pattern I have right here, it's the Megan Nielsen Matilda. Uh, and it's a beautiful shirt dress, um, full button placket down the front. It's got a waistband, breast pockets, lovely big pockets here at the front as well. The back you've got sort of a front yoke and you've got a back yoke and it's a panelled back uh, panelled skirt and it's such a lovely make um, so my very first version I made this uh, this version here with sort of the um, grown on sleeves um, and this version here is the one where on their website they do have um, a hack for adding a proper sleeve which I have done and so I've got the short sleeve version here it's really really comfy to wear I loved every minute of actually making up this pattern uh, it was quite um, intricate uh, there were a lot of steps because you had the burrito method for the front yoke and the back yoke you had the button placket you had the patch pockets um, but everything was really, really enjoyable. And especially because I was working with a linen that even made, that made things even more enjoyable because as you know, linen is very uh, easy and uh, very nice to press, sew and work with. So that's what I'm wearing today. So, uh, first make of uh, for the month of June, um, in no particular order, I will start with the dress behind me right here. So this is the, let me get it out for you. The Belgravia Knit Dress by Liesel & Co. I've got the pattern right here. And this was part of the All Set to Sew Sew Luxurious kit that I received from um, Nicola at Little Miss So and So as part of their brand ambassador. So I get a kit uh, once a month um, and it's your usual, you know, you get the pattern, the fabric, all the notions. Oh, sorry. All the notions included and a special gift as well. I believe it's... Um, £65 a month, but I get a small discount as a brand ambassador. So the two different kits that um, Little Miss So-and-So do are the So Special Kit, which I believe is about 40 or £45 per month, and then the So Luxurious, which is about £65 per month. Um, and the difference between the two is just your choice of fabric. With the So Special, you get some lovely choices of fabric. With the So Luxurious, you get designer uh, fabric choices, which is lovely. Uh, sorry, there's a little fly in here. <laughs> but the um, pattern choice are the same so with these kits every month um, if you subscribe you get a choice between a, a woven pattern or a knit pattern and then you get a choice of fabrics to choose from as well then it comes uh, through your letterbox obviously every month um, with everything that you need to make for that particular for that particular pattern so for the month of June I chose the Belgravia knit dress and basically what it is it's a knit dress in a jersey basically jersey or French terry you can use Ponte Roma interlock medium weight uh, knit fabrics and it's um, sort of like a fifth fitted uh, is it shift dress fitted dress and then you have a choice between the short sleeves and the long sleeve and then you have this lovely tie here um, and the, you have the option for that to just tie at the front or for it to go all the way around and then tie at the front as well uh, there's also a split here at the front I'll show you the back drawing so this is what I mean by the 
So for this version here, the tie only goes at the front, so there's nothing at the back. And then for this version here, the tie, you can make the tie longer to go at the back as well. I preferred the one uh, with the tie going all the way around the back, only because I just like that it breaks up the back a bit and um, it hides sort of unsightly lumps and bumps if you like to hide that sort of thing. So here is my version over here. Ta-da! This is um, a beautiful organic... Uh, cotton jersey in their petrol colorway I believe um, and it sewed up really really beautifully it washed really beautifully the color didn't um, fade at all um, tell a lie sorry this is actually the so special kit I have since upgraded to the so luxurious kit but this is the so special kit at this moment in time and I really really like this dress so it's a pattern I wouldn't have chosen um, and this is the great thing about these kits is because it kind of forces you to try patterns you wouldn't normally go for and fabric you wouldn't normally go for. So I wouldn't normally go for this pattern, but I liked how it turned out. Secondly, I wouldn't actually normally go for plain cotton jersey because I find with plains, again, you can see lumps and bumps more so, uh, especially with a clingy jersey as well. And for some reason, I was always under the impression that cotton jersey was like t-shirt material, which it is, but there are some t-shirt materials that are quite thin and this is sort of a lovely um sort of medium weight jersey so it's not too thin not too thick um, and it's beautifully soft to wear so the things that i did different with the pattern i omitted the let me just show you it goes all the way down there so what I did is I omitted the slit at the front. I didn't put the slit at the front. I was going to move it to the back, but actually I thought because it was a jersey dress, I don't think it really needed it. What I also did was lengthen it to below the knee and I um, actually widened the skirt a little bit. Therefore, I, I totally didn't need the slit either at the front or the back. I did the long sleeve version and that's it really. So let me show you the dress. So... It's a V-neck here. Now, normally with um, a jersey um, neckline, it would normally be like a you, you would buy sort of some ribbing fabric to go around or um, bias binding or, an, or a facing. This one, um, however, they've just um, asked you to um, fold it over and stitch it down. Now, that's not really my... Um, desired way of finishing off a jersey neckline but actually I was very surprised how it turned out because it is very very neat there's no puckers and it actually doesn't look too bad considering that's the finish that the pattern um, had instructed me to do so that's that so this is the tie um the front tie that they have here I can show you that um and what it is is I'll turn her around so the tie goes around the back there you undo the tie Turn it to the front and um, it's basically like this really odd um, kind of I wouldn't know how to draft that pattern piece myself so the front bodice is made up made up of um, two panels and then this sort of long lengthy bit comes out of the bottom of the panel almost like the um, where you would normally find a waist start at the front bodice instead um, of a waist start it's this long um, sort of tie that goes through there and then when you uh, tie it across the um across your waist it provides this beautiful sort of ruching detail um and that sort of accentuates a, a narrow waist as well and it gives some nice shaping to the bodice which is really really nice um so the like i said the bodice is made up of two pieces here um and the skirt is also made up of two pieces. Now, I believe the skirt has a center seam uh, to allow for the split, but obviously I didn't do the split. So I guess in hindsight, you could just um, cut the front. Um, you could just cut, cut the front skirt in um, on the fold just to save on um, sewing time and um, just omits that center seam. Uh, the back, again, the back bodice is made out of two uh, pieces. Um, again, you could just omit this and cut it on the fold if you wanted to. Likewise, the back, if you didn't want to put a, sp a split in, you could just cut this again on the fold um, so that's less sewing for you to do. Everything else was really, really straightforward, actually. And I was quite... Um, 
interested to see how it would all turn out because like I said I'd never made um this pattern before I'd never actually I've heard of the company before but I'd never used any of their patterns before so it was a nice surprise instructions were fairly straightforward um and yeah that's it um sorry in terms of the size guide this goes from a size uh, zero which is a bust of 32 inches waist of 25 inches all the way up to a size 20 which is a bust of 46 inches to a waist of 38 inches and a half and um, this also reminds me of um the kilo wrap dress by named clothing which is a popular wrap dress as well it's got the similar sort of front tie but with their one when you open it up it's almost like a bat wing dress where there's like almost a triangular bit of fabric all the way around and that's what wraps around your um, waist um, so this is a very similar dress if you wanted uh, to do the kilo wrap dress for example because the kilo wrap dress does require a lot more fabric and also I don't believe I think I think it's a sleeveless dress that one although now I I think they have um, done uh, an add-on to add sleeves uh, but this is a lovely alternative as well if you wanted to try a new pattern and sort of a lovely um, jersey um, kind of wrap dress as well so there you go that's that one uh, let me just put her aside um, and then the next item that I made for the month of June was the Anthea Allen the Anna Allen Anthea blouse. Let me show you the pattern. This is very popular on Instagram. So it's basically a lovely button down blouse, very, very loose fitting, as you can see here. And then these beautiful, big, billowy um, sleeves. Uh, you've got the option to do a blouse version and also a dress version, which is just the lengthened version of the blouse, lengthening the button placket and adding a waist tie. I went for this version over here and my version is oh by the way let me just pop up a photo of myself in the belgravia knit dress and i'll pop up a photo of myself in this anthea allen blouse as well and here she is now this is made up in a beautiful and natural 100 percent linen from jenny stitches who I'm also a blogger for and then I've just bought some lovely um what are those like shell mother of pearl type buttons in a flower um design um and that was just from hemline of hobbycraft and I loved how this turned out again because it's linen it was so lovely to work with so lovely to press in terms of the instructions for the Anna Allen pattern they are so nice um, and I, it, it was just such an enjoyable make uh, you make your own bias binding uh, for the neckline and it's just all the instructions when it sort of said fold over by for example a quarter of an inch and then another three-eighth of an inch everything just like folded in so beautifully and all the seams were just it was just so lovely to work with um, and then you've got like little cuffs at the bottom of the sleeve um, a button placket down here and it's just a very loose um, loose blouse all the bottom is like a curved hem as well at the front and at the back and even the hem is beautiful and it matches the same uh, width of the um, the bias binding on the neckline I really really loved uh, making this I do plan to make another one of this of these um, I have an old um, Liberty Tana Law no I'm not sure what it is Liberty Cotton um, pinafore that I made for my daughter back when I first started sewing and she doesn't wear it anymore and it's a full circle skirt so there's a lot of fabric there that I can use to make uh, another one of these in terms of the pattern itself this goes up um, from a size um, zero zero which is a bust of 31 inches waist of 24 inches up to a size 22 which is a bust of 48 inches and a waist of 41 inches now as I say because it is a very loose blouse there is a lot of ease and when I say a lot I had to size down by two or three sizes I believe I made the size bear with me I should write all of this down shouldn't I I believe I may so I and according to my measurements for my bus so I would follow my bus because obviously the waist um where it's so flowy you know the waist is kind of negligible as it were so according to my bust I should have been a size 12 which is a bust of 38 and a half inches my bus is 38 so I would have been a size 12 
um, but because of the amount of ease um, the finished garment so the finished measurement for a size 12 bust would be 45 and a half inches so that's a massive five six seven seven inches of ease at the bust and then in the waist I won't even tell you how many in the waist on the waist um, it says 31 inches if that's your measurement for for the size 12 and the finished measurement would be 48 and a half inches so I ended up sort of doing the size six I believe yes I did the size six which is meant for a bust of 35 and a waist of 28 uh, but the finished measurements were a bust of 42 and a waist of 45 which is perfect i fit in it perfectly and i really really love it i think it's a lovely casual blouse but it's so put together that actually you could be dressed up or down and these billowy sleeves are amazing so uh, for those of you that don't know i my parents are originally from the philippines and in the philippines we have this traditional um costume they call it or traditional garments that um filipinos wear for special occasions and it's called the filipina terno which is t-e-r-n-o and now for those eagle um eagle eye watchers of uh, the great british sewing bee i believe one of the previous um seasons um they did uh, one of the previous series they did um part of their cultural um international section you know they sort of do like i think they did the origami um origami tops uh, for like the japanese um uh, the Japanese international sort of um, part of the of their series and for this uh, series uh, they use the Filipino Terno as their international challenge as it were and it's got these big billowy sleeves and this just reminds me of that totally and it's just so lovely and I love it I will show you a photo of a Filipino Terno and I will also show you for my uh, brother's wedding. I have one older brother. For his wedding, um, he um, we all dressed up in our traditional Filipino attire. And I'll show you a family photo of that. And as you can see there, myself, um, my mum is there. Then it's myself next to her and my two other daughters as well. We all ha are we we are all wearing gowns with the sort of big puffy turnout sleeves. So that's that. Um, lovely pattern, brilliant instructions. Um, it looks really, really nice dressed up or down. Perfect in linen, cotton. Viscose would work as well, but you wouldn't get sort of the build up of these beautiful sleeves here. So that's that one. Uh, the next thing I made in the month of June was a collaboration that I did with a friend of art mine. Uh, her name is Claire from Stitch Hem Sew. And we decided to do uh, an outfit collaboration, which is basically, uh, which composed of, which consisted of the Jennifer Lauren Handmade Bastion Palottes, which is this version here. So it's basically trousers slash skirt. So it's a skirt. Um, where it's a pair of trousers, a pair of loose trousers that sort of um, masquerade as, as masquerades as a skirt. And the lovely details about this, it's got like a sort of sailor front bib um, detail here. And then the buttons um, on the side and then this bib bit goes forward for you to get in. Lovely deep pockets um, and lovely uh, shaping there. So this pattern goes, actually Jennifer Lauren Handmade have now released a sort of two different sizing bands for their patterns. You've got the original, which is a size 6 to 24, and the curved size, which is a size 16 to 34. Um, so I got the original size. And this starts from a size 6, which is a waist of 24 and a quarter inches and a hip of 35 and a quarter inches up to a 24, which is a waist of 41 and 7 eighth inches and a hip of 52 and 7 eighth inches. I believe I did the size 12 in this one and I did the longer version. So it's just sort of below the knee. And I'll show you that here. Oh, let me show you a picture actually of the whole outfit. So that's the Bastion Colotte and to go with that I made the Tilly and the Buttons uh, Pearl Cardigan which is that, that, which is that there, that pattern there and that's basically a lovely wrap cardigan, long sleeves and sh or short sleeves and then you've got like a, a band that goes all the way around the neck, um, a lovely tie and some cuffs as well. So this one has got a drop shoulder. Um, and it's quite cropped so it's like on your high natural waist 
you've also got the choice between like i said short sleeve long sleeve or also these sort of billowy and um, bishop sleeves as well so here is the um photo of me in the complete outfit and I'll also show a photo of Claire in hers. I will link Claire's details below as well if you want to go and watch her video. And let me show you the items that I've made. So the Bastion Pilots, um is this here. And I'll show you the buttons at the front. Oh, they're not done up. Let me just do those buttons up for you. Or oh, the other side is done up. <laughs> so the buttons there, you can see all the way down there. And you've got a lovely pocket and it's beautiful and swishy and this is a lovely um just i think it's just a polyester viscose from um so essential and it's like a lovely watercolor floral print lovely and bright perfect for the spring summer and the pearl cardigan i chose a lovely dusty um dusty green french terry from pound fabrics and I went for the straight long sleeves. Um, and there you go. So let me talk about the Bastion Collottes. Um, They were a really easy make, actually. Um, just a word of warning. Um, I tried these on halfway through before the buttons were in. And so it gets you to just base that part um at the beginning or sort of near the middle before you put the buttons in it just gets you to baste it to hold it together whilst you're sewing the other parts and I mean although I know obviously that that is the way to get in and out of it for some reason I just thought let me try it on and I could barely fit it over my hips and I just thought oh no I've made it too small anyway I was nearly at the end so I thought you know I'd, I'd unbaste the, the sort of the stitches that held this bit together I'll do the buttonholes add the buttons and then try it on again and obviously it did fit uh, because I didn't uh, take into consideration the fact that obviously uh, you need to undo these buttons for you to get in because your hips are bigger than your waist and you won't be able to get in so anyway it was a very easy make um when I say easy um there was nothing difficult about it the patterns were very very straightforward um are they colored patterns no they're not colored patterns but very very straightforward um I loved how the front bib a uh, bit um, came together. That was really, really nice. And I loved the pockets as well. Uh, I loved it so much, in fact, that I did make another pair, which I don't have on me. But it's um, a denim version, like a lightweight, almost like a chambray, but in like a dark denim. If I have a photo, I will try and pop it up. Um, and I really, really like the fact that it um, looks like a skirt. But then when you sort of open your legs or, um, I don't know, sit down with your legs crossed, maybe if you're having going out for a picnic or doing, I don't know, some sort of sport, um, then, um, yeah, you know, you can sit down and feel at ease because they are just like trousers, really, as well as a skirt in one, two in one, basically. So that's that. I really do like Jennifer Lauren handmade patterns. The only other thing I have made from Jennifer Lauren is her Pippi Pinafore, which I love. And I also have the Asteria dress pattern from her, which I would like to make probably next month or the month after. And also she's got another pair of, has she got collets? No, that's Megan Nielsen. Megan Nielsen have got a pair of collots that I want to try because um, her collots, it says in the description that there's sort of a special clever pleating technique at the front uh, to cover up sort of the trouser illusion um, and it just looks basically like a, like a skirt, but it's obviously a pair of collots. Anyway, I digress. Going on to the Tilly and the Buttons Pearl Cardigan. So it's this one here. Again, a lovely make. Um, Tilly and the Buttons instructions, as you know, very, very um, easy to follow. However, with the ties here, uh, the, these ties here, there was a part in the pattern that was quite confusing, actually, considering it is a Tilly and the Buttons, um, Tilly and the Buttons instructions. It's just like the right side... Uh, uh, I'll show you these bits here. So the right side and the left side, and it was saying facing forward, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it was quite confusing. So I had to try and, you know, go over that several times just to make sure that I had the right, uh, because the um, the strings, the ties are different length. One is shorter and one is longer. And you had to make sure it was on the right side 
or the left side and now obviously with patterns um normally it says um, if you're facing the garment it's the right the right or the left or if you're wearing it it's the right or the left so obviously they're the opposite so it was a little bit confusing but i got there in the end um so that's that with regards to adding the waistband at the bottom i didn't read the instructions very well um well actually i didn't read the instructions at all for this part because i thought you know what i know how to add the waistband let me just do it so basically um you um pin it together um right sides together and i um overlocked mine i did most of the stuff um most of the making of this um cardigan on my overlocker apart from the top stitching which i did with a triple my stretch stitch on my sewing machine um so i overlocked this um and to my surprise when i turned it up pam this part should be at the end here but it doesn't reach that point obviously um and i didn't have the foresight to think that it would do so so when i went back and went i when i went back and reread the pattern when you pin these pieces together that little triangle bit needs to be sticking out here so then when you fold it up this end here perfectly fits that in there something that i'll have to do next time round um unfortunately so it's happened on both sides so one side is hidden under the wrap the other side is on the side of the cardigan but you know what i don't think anyone's going to notice that so that's the only mistake i made with this pattern actually i don't believe you have to top stitch does it tell you to top stitch let me check um no it you don't have to top stitch this actually um but i just decided i like the idea of top stitching it because obviously this quite chunky overlocked part just wasn't laying flat really i guess you could iron it down but i quite like the idea of top stitching that anyhow and i thought that turned out quite nice um would i make it again yes i would make it again the only thing i don't like about this cardigan is i think it is a bit too roomy at the side maybe it could do with like a dart in there and i know it's a knitted garment but i think some knitted garments would work well with the dart anyway so either i could add a dart i don't know if i'm clever enough to do that or i could just size down in the bust waist area the second thing i'd like to do is i'm not too keen on the drop shoulder um i just don't i don't know it's just a bit too casual for me I don't know, that sounds really like a silly thing to say but um i'll show you the line drawings there i quite like the idea of the shoulder seem to be at the shoulder now i'm not sure how i would go about doing that my first instinct is i'm sure you would have guessed you, you you'll guess is just to chop it off here lengthen the um sleeve part and then attach the two together i don't know will that work who knows if anybody has done it before please comment below and how you did that uh, so that's the one thing i would change would be the um drop shoulder i don't i'm not too keen on that secondly i would size down on sort of the bust waist area uh oh and thirdly the waist these waist ties i think there's quite a lot of ties on there when you um wear the cardigan the long tie goes around your back so it goes through the side, around your back, and it ties on the side. And then at the back, you've got sort of this, um, you know, this tie on the back here. And you're forever sort of, you know, trying to fix yourself, make sure it's not too high, not too low. And that's just a bit annoying. So I think what I'll do next time is what I've done with some of my other wrap dresses or wrap... Um, yep wrap dresses is for the inner for the inner wrap instead of uh, making a hole or making it go all the way around i will just put a button in the on the inside there and then i will just have a short tie here and then another short tie here and just tie at the end there i hope that makes sense that's what i plan to do with my other versions apart from that lovely lovely make really lovely to wear and yeah another great pattern by tilly so that's that collaboration um what else do i have ah uh, the next things I made weren't for myself, which is nice. Um, it um, is a, um, a dress that I made for my daughter, Anya, who is seven years old. I have made this dress before. It's the Elia Mac B Curious dress pattern. It's this pattern here. And um, this goes up from 12 months uh, to Big Kid 12, which is amazing. So I have made my daughter this exact version, in fact, in a chambray. But I lengthened the um, 
skirt a little bit and every and also i lengthened the bodice a little bit as well um and everything else is the same so i really really love this pattern i have made it before as i say instructions are fairly straightforward you get the options for um these long sleeves which again you can cut however long you would like them and a little ruffle sleeve as well you've also got a ruffle at the bottom or you can just use a plain um a plain skirt uh, so um what i made my daughter was a first holy communion dress so I will show you my daughter in her dress and uh, for those of you that do have Instagram if you check out my social thread on Instagram you will see that I have posted some photos on there as well and also a lovely reel uh, of the making of that dress um, so please check out my account on Instagram and the dress is here Ta-da! let me just stand up the bottom of that is all puckered up uh, and there you go <laughs> um, and then we've got some lovely pearl buttons as well at the back here and a matching veil in this beautiful lace Uh, so basically, um, yeah, the dress is the Be Curious dress pattern. And what I love about this is, as I say, I have made that version before and it was a lovely casual dress. But the beauty of sewing is you can take a pattern and by your fabric choices, you can elevate that pattern from a casual dress to an occasion dress, which I have done. And I'm super, super happy about how this turned out. My daughter loved it. We got so many comments, um, positive comments about it. And it was just so lovely to make as well. So the fabric that I used here... This is actually a faux silk in white uh, from eBay. I had originally planned to use real silk, real raw silk. I love the raw silk um, because it has sort of this slub effect. This faux silk has um, imitated that slub effect here. Uh, now, the only place I could find uh, this uh, real uh, raw silk was on Etsy. But when I ordered it, the only white colour they had wasn't white enough. It was sort of like a beigey creamy color and when I contacted contacted them to say I ordered a white this isn't white they said unfortunately that's as white as their white goes but they are getting new suppliers soon uh, but the fabric wouldn't have come in time for when I needed it so I basically had to go for the faux silk because I couldn't find the real silk anywhere else um where I could get it in on time and where it was a reasonable price so the raw silk the real raw silk I think was about 20 pounds a meter maybe about 25 pounds a meter this faux silk which is lovely to work with it's got sort of the same uh, properties sort of the color the sheen the slub was only 6.99 a meter which is a bargain on ebay um, i just got some lovely uh, dome pearl buttons from hobbycraft um, this beautiful lace if i show you on the bed it's easier this beautiful embroidered um, and beaded uh, lace I got from a company called White Lodge Fabrics. I will link it all down below and it's just all beautifully beaded there. And I think this is called their Trailing Tulips design. And then from there I also got their, what is it called, crinoline, which is sort of like a, like sort of a thick, more plasticky kind of uh, tool. Um, and I guess they use that in bridal dresses to poof up the dress. Um, and that's it. Yeah, so this was a lovely, lovely make. Um, as I say, I've made the pattern before, so I knew exactly what I was doing. This is a fully lined bodice as well. Let me show you. And I've just lined it in the same faux silk. So it's beautifully, just beautifully enclosed there. And there you go. The only issues I had with um, making this dress with this fabric is there was a lot of layers. Let me see if I can show you. Um, so basically I had the faux silk. Sorry, I had the lace tool layer at the top. Then I had the faux silk. Then I had two layers of the crinoline. So that's four layers all together. And I'll show you how thick it is. Oh, well, it's not. it doesn't look that thick, but... So that's the crinoline, that's how thick it was on the inside. So that was quite hard to get through. And also putting gathering stitches for everything was quite hard, especially on the lace where there were beads on the edges. So I had to be careful not to break a needle and also for things not to be flying around on my in, and hitting my eyes. 
for this veil is just the remnant part that I sort of cut in sort of like a semicircle shape and the bottom of the lace um to both sides have the um scallop selvage or the scallop ends and then for the curved part i had to cut the scallop end edge and hand stitch it to the bottom of this part here and then i bought some wig clips here so that clips onto my daughter's head nice and firmly and that's not going anywhere so that's that that's the dress that i made for my daughter's first holy communion um and then for the um after party i thought she's not going to wear that dress <laughs> because it's uh, so nice you know i don't want her to wear it for the party i get stains in it also i would love to um kind of keep it in the family as an heirloom now a new heirloom but i also have a younger daughter who's currently one at the moment so i would love for her to wear that for her first holy communion as well so i would like like to keep that dress as nice and clean and new as possible so i made anya a second dress which is which was her party Party dress again exactly the same pattern the be curious pattern I did this version here lengthened the bodice uh, lengthened the skirt and I did the long sleeve and I did this in this fabric from Jenny Stitches fabric who again as I say I'm a blogger for and it's a lovely white dobby cotton with a floral print and the dobby is this sort of these little tufts of cotton there and then it's got a lovely floral print uh, buttons at the back um i use the same buttons i believe at the back and for the bodice and the skirt i have fully lined it because it's, it, it is a little bit sheer but then for the sleeves i left it unlined so then you know it's just got a bit a bit of detail there i'll just show you and this turned out really really nice i'll pop up a picture of her wearing it and i just think it just looks like a lovely sort of traditional girly feminine lovely party dress um and i hope you think so too so i really really do like this pattern um i um can make it now with my eyes closed well not with my eyes closed but i can make it now without looking at the instructions and i do have a couple of short sleeve versions um planned for my daughter for summer although it's summer now i really need to get going on that um and that i believe is everything that i have done for the month of june i hope you enjoyed that i hope i haven't rambled on too much i will pop up um i will pop a link of everything that i've talked about below hopefully if there are any questions and comments please do comment below otherwise contact me at my social thread on instagram uh and in the meantime thank you so much for watching take care Bye bye